My question is, if we don't have a new direct desire, if we're just happy and we just like flowing downstream, then what's really going on in your vortex will show itself to you and you will feel the inspiration of that. Because you do always, no exception, have powerful desires. So if you're doing as you suggest that you might do, just chilling, looking for reasons to feel good, you will be in the receptive mode and you will begin to receive the momentum of that vortex. So I get the big things. I'm okay with my big desires. Like my marriage is not perfect. I have issues with other big things, money, whatever. I'm okay with that flowing downstream, letting the universe back me up. But when I have a really amazing idea and I feel like I need to effort to make it happen well, and I catch myself. We really like those words a lot because that's what we were reaching for in an earlier segment when we were talking about it's an interesting thing to watch so many of you who are beginning to accept the laws of the universe and understand that sweet spot that we're talking about, about being in the receptive mode and then feeling the ideas flow to you. And it's so interesting to watch so many of you, Esther does it too, where you know what that feels like, but you're still really prone to try to jump into the action mode to try to goose it along. And the analogy that we've been giving recently is like, so you go to your kitchen, you want to make some toast, you get out your toaster, you get out your bread, you take it out of the wrapper, you put the slices in, you push down the levers, but you didn't bother to plug the toaster in. So you've gone through most of the motions that is accurate, but you didn't connect to the electricity first. And that's what happens so often. You jump into action when you're not clearly connected to the current. And so then the action does feel like effort. Be like trying to toast toast with no electricity. A lot of effort rubbing those rocks together. <laughs> so if you're there, I mean, so can I go along having chocolate cake and doing yoga and massages and love and life, knowing that that's all being done? Do yes, I have can. to do anything? Well, because <laughs> I really like the massage. I really like the chocolate cake. You see, what will happen is that if you are really in a place of non-resistance, now, if you're getting a massage and feeling guilty about it, or eating chocolate cake and feeling guilty about it, then you're not really going with that flow that you're talking about. But the answer to a question, if the question is, if I am in the receptive mode and I'm feeling really good, is it necessary for me to take action to make things happen? The answer to that is no, it is not necessary for you to take action to make things happen because universal forces are lining things up. However, you will be inspired to act, but it won't be the action that makes it happen. It's hard to hear because you're action oriented. If you could let your action be the way you enjoy the true fruits of your labor rather than trying to make the action be the labor itself, things would go so much better for you. And so the key is to act when I feel inspired, not because I need to. And that was the game Esther was playing with herself the other day. She didn't want to act out of need. She didn't want to motivate herself. She wanted to be inspired. She wanted it to come from the vortex, but it took a little while. Well, and the action that I speak of is not even unpleasant. I mean, it's pleasant action. I, I, I love my ideas and I love being able to help people. And Then what and are you talking about? I want to flow down the river and just let it be handed to me. And I do feel just, not, it's not even guilt anymore. But that's the way this sweet spot that we've been talking about of thoughts turning to things is. Things are just handed to you. They come in the form of an idea and then another idea and then a rendezvous and then another idea and then a rendezvous and then an impulse to go somewhere and do something with someone. It is all handed to you. But there's something in the human psyche that goes something like things shouldn't just be handed to me I should earn it I need to deserve it so we spend some time wanting to convince you that you are deserving of it we're talking with the young father with the little baby earlier and we started this conversation about not encouraging your baby or anyone and no longer doing it yourself so much of replacing your inner being with other people. But so many of you have 
done that already where you're trying to get the marks on the chart or you're seeking approval from someone and so you have gotten into the habit of acting because when you get a job usually the person who's paying you is expecting some action from you it would be very odd if you just showed up at work and just sat there <laughs> and your employer says what's going on and you say I'm waiting for inspiration <laughs> and your employer would give you some inspiration <laughs> that's really more like motivation do this or else and so it's a way you've sort of trained yourself you become far more reliant on action and you're using action in a way that you never intended instead of getting into the receptive mode and following the flow of the energy what most people do is they don't do that and then they try to use action to compensate and that's why the analogy of the toaster not being plugged in is such a good one you're trying to get results out of a toaster that's not plugged in and that's why so much of your action it makes you feel tired it makes you feel weary it makes you feel unproductive where when you're really tuned in tapped in turned on then so let's get to the heart of this question so how do I go about that and we say the answer is momentum and then you say well tell me more about momentum and we say momentum simply means have a thought and don't contradict it that really is the definition of momentum have a thought and don't contradict it Esther has been playing with some friends and they lived in another state and they've been talking about moving to California for years so this momentum has been underway soft momentum and it was momentum that came up in conversations like wouldn't it be fun and wouldn't it be nice if and wouldn't it be fun if we could play together out there sometimes and very light like that and then the conversations got more specific and they made the decision that they wanted to move there even though they have a really robust business somewhere else they really began thinking about that and they weren't thinking about how it was going to come or when it was going to come or where it was going to come from or who was going to bring it about they're just thinking about wouldn't it be nice if wouldn't that be fun so it became a pretty constant in the conversation that Esther had with these friends because she spends some time out there and she just thought it would be lovely if they were there too and then their conversation turned as the momentum began to gather a little bit of steam to things like how much fun we have when we are together here and how many places we like to go and do fun stuff when we are here and how many lovely restaurants there are here and how nice it is to walk on the beach here and not trying to make anything happen they were just sort of milking what they all could feel like momentum they could feel that there was subtle momentum going and they began milking it not to make anything happen but for the pleasure of the milking of it that was their agreement with each other we'll talk about this if it feels good so every now and again one of them would call the other of them when they felt inspired to do so when there was a little momentum going and then a job opened up for one of them a significant job opened up and the question was so do we take that job well don't take any action until you can't stand not to take the action was sort of the agreement that they had and so as this began unfolding Esther said to them because she happened to be there and they made the move he took the job everything is unfolding and Esther said to her friends I'm going to be out there for about two weeks during such and such a time and I have about four days that I could focus with you as you move into your new house that was all that was said and then momentum started flowing they were hanging around together and they'd get an impulse to go over there or to go over there or to go over there and in four days they found everything from top to bottom that was necessary for this house with such ease and flow and really very little spending of money because of the way it was unfolding that Esther has been saying to anyone who she can pin down to listen to her those were four of the most fun days I've ever lived in my entire life so now she's trying to figure out why what was so fun about it why did it feel like that and then as she listens to us we go on and on about the vortex and we talk about the sweet spot and she realizes hey we were in the sweet spot so what are the components of being in the sweet spot what does Abraham mean by that sweet spot well weren't trying to make anything happen 
and we're all in love with each other and there was zero criticism about anything, there was zero worry about anything and there was zero effort about anything. It was just how much fun can we have together while we're doing this? Well, we know that you've had some of those experiences yourself, but until you've had them and you make the association between the words that we're saying here and the law that we are presenting to you with these words and the actual experience of what it feels like to you when you get into the flow, and here's why. Here's why this works the way it does. Through life, you have put endless things into your vortex, which means your inner being who stands in your vortex, in this vibrational reality, knows where you stand in relationship to everything you want, knows where you are in relationship to everything you want, and here are the most important words, and knows the path of least resistance to call you to them. Now those are really important words, path of least resistance, let's make it clear, your path of least resistance, let's make it clear, your path that you have put resistance on your trail, your inner being knows where all of your bugaboos are, where all of your hangups are, where all of those engines are likely to be, your inner being knows where everything that is potentially in your way is in terms of the thoughts that you think, and your inner being is calling you over and around and under and through all of that resistance. So if you are following your joy as you want to do but are really a little reluctant about, if you're following your bliss, if we are really doing a sales job and you are hearing it, that if you could get into that place where you're not acting out of need but acting out of want, not acting because somebody else wants you to but acting because you want to, really following the inspiration while it will be slow going in the beginning because frankly, most of you have been motivating yourself by what will go wrong if you don't act for so long that it's going to take a little bit of adjustment for you to do things because you want to do them. But we promise you it is really worth turning that corner and understanding that because of all of the power that's in your vortex and all of the knowledge that your inner being holds and because of all of the rendezvous and what you want to call coincidences that will line up for you and give you not only the results that you're looking for, but the ride that you want along the way. You've been saying, we hear you say it to each other all the time, the joy is in the journey. And there's rare one of you that even understands what that means. Because you mean the joy is in the journey on the way to where I really want to be, which is my destination. That's what you mean when you say the joy is in the journey. The joy is in the journey on my way to where I really want to be. And if where you really want to be is taking a higher priority within you than the journey that you want to be on, then it's out of balance still, you see. So we are really encouraging you to find a handful of things that you really like to do and just do them, do them, do them, do them, do them as much as you can so that you will put yourself in a place of feeling some of the blessedness that you really deserve to feel. But even as we ask you to act like that, take this action of pleasure, we realize that we're contradicting our own message a little bit because we really don't want you to act. We want you to find thoughts that get so big that you can't refuse them anymore. We want the thought to be so big that you can't refuse the inspiration of it anymore. But in order to do that, you got to start in this place where you stop contradicting the thought. You've got to let your thoughts become powerful. You've got to let a thought of your desire get enough momentum that it calls you. It's already called your inner being and it's already called all of the other cooperative components. You're the last one who's holding out. So you've got to get enough momentum going that your desire can call you into that flow, into that stream. And the way, the only way that that will happen is you have to stop putting contradictory thoughts on the other end of your train. That's the only way. 